Hello folks. In this tutorial series, I'm going to go through the code that I used for creating this platformer in Pygame. So if you've seen my previous platformer tutorial, you might be familiar with some of these concepts already. Uh, but in this one, I've added in quite a lot of extra features. So for example, you can see that the map is quite a lot bigger and the player essentially scrolls it as he moves from left to right. Uh, in addition to that, I've got all these enemies in here uh, with a little bit of AI. So when they see you, they start to shoot at you. Uh, and on top of that, I've got the player able to shoot back and throw some grenades. So in addition to that, there's ammo and there's health bar and uh, a total number of grenades as well. So I've added these little pickups that will restore your grenades, your ammo and your health as you pick them up. So I'm going to go through how to, how to code this game just now. To start off, I just need to import Pygame and initialize it. So I say import Pygame and under that I say pygame.init. Now with that done, I can now start creating my game window. Now that game window just needs a couple of variables, which are the overall size. So I'll define a screen width, which I'll set to 800 pixels, and then a screen height. Now this one is going to be adjustable, so I want the screen height to always be 80% of my screen width. So I can just say screen width multiplied by 0.8. Now this is going to give me a float value, and I need an integer. So I just wrap this in brackets, and at the very start, I type int. So that will convert it into an integer. Now with that done, I can create the game window. So you assign that to a variable. In my case, I'm going to call it screen. So I say that my screen is a pygame.display.set underscore mode. And within here, I put in those two variables I just created. So it's my screen width followed by my screen height. And that's it. That's going to create my game window. Uh, but it's going to just be called a pygame window, so I want to give it a title. Uh, I'll just say in here pygame.display.set underscore caption, and you can put in whatever you like here. I'm just going to call this a shooter. So if I run this code now, we'll see the game window pops up just for a split second and disappears again. And the reason for that is that the code is just being executed from top to bottom. It gets to the end, and that's pretty much it. There's nothing to continue doing. But to keep this constantly running, I actually need to create a loop. Now for that, I'm going to use a while loop, and a while loop essentially just runs as long as the condition is being met. So to start off with, I'm going to give it a variable that's already set to true. I'll say run equals true, and then I'll just say while run. So by saying this, I'm essentially saying that as long as this variable remains in a true condition, whatever's within this while loop is just going to keep getting executed. So if I was to run this now, the game would actually freeze because I would get into this loop, but I'd have no way of getting out of it because I have nothing to say run is false, and which would break this loop. Now, normally, if you want to exit any kind of program, you could just click the X in the top right. So that counts as some kind of interaction. Now, my while loop doesn't have any interactions at the moment, so that's what I want to add in just now. Uh, and these essentially within Pygame are events. So if you click the mouse or if you press anything on the keyboard, that is an event. So I just need to code in an event handler. And all this is, is just a for loop. So I say for event in pygame.event.get. This is going to give me all of the events that are happening. So as soon as I click the mouse or press anything on the keyboard, this will record it and it will register it. The one I need just now is for quit game. Oops, I just meant to make that as a comment. Uh, and that one is quite straightforward. I just look for a particular type of event. I'll say if event.type equals pygame.quit. So this right here is the event that I'm looking for. This is when someone's clicked on the X button in the top right. And now if that's happened, like I explained before, I just need to set the run variable to false. As soon as that happens, this while loop is no longer meeting the condition. So it ends and it quits. So I just say in here, run equals false. And just to tidy everything up, right at the end, I'll say pygame.quit. Now if I run this code, you'll see my game window comes up. It's got this little caption at the top that says shooter and I'm able to move around and I can now quit. So this essentially gives me a very basic game skeleton. So into that, I can now start building on some of the features. Now, the first thing I want to add is the player characters. I want to have some kind of little character here that I can move around with the mouse keys. So there's going to be a few variables that I want to add for the player himself. So I can say, for example, uh, I want an X variable and a Y variable. So that's going to determine where on the screen the player is going to appear. So let's just say X equals uh, for example, 200 and y equals also 200. So that's the coordinates where I want to draw the player. Uh, next, I want to load in the player's image. So img equals, uh, to load in any image in Pygame, you just say pygame.image.load, and then you put in the directory or the location of the picture that you want. So in my case, all of my images are within an img folder. 
so in here I just say img forward slash uh, the one I want is for the player I want it in the idle state and it is 0.png so I'll explain this later but essentially I've got a whole bunch of different images because I have different animations so I've got the idle and running jumping and so on so this is how I access that particular picture however the image itself is not the important part so this is what you will actually see on the screen but this is not what does all the controls and the collisions and so on that's actually a rectangle that's determined from this image so I'll say rect equals img dot get underscore rect so what this essentially does is it takes the size of this image and it creates a boundary box around it so this rectangle is what's going to be used for controlling the position of it everything uh, as well as doing collisions the image is just going to be drawn in the location of this rectangle now the last thing I need to do is position this rectangle based on these x and y coordinates so I can just say rect dot center equals x and y so now I can run this code just to see if it works and that's fine it executes fine nothing is coming up yet because I haven't told Pygame to actually draw this on the screen but, but I can see that it's executing okay so it must be loading the image and creating a rectangle from it so now what I can do is draw this onto the screen and to do that I just use the blit method or the blit function so you know that I've already defined my screen so now I just need to draw the image onto it so I come down into my game loop and I will keep my event handling right at the bottom so I will do this above the event handler so to use the blit function I first of all want to uh, tell it where to show this so in my case my display window is called screen so I say screen dot blit then I need to tell it what image I want which is img and then the location which is rect so this rect contains the x and y coordinates so if I run this code again nothing's happening yet so it is executing it however it's not updating the, the window so I need to add one more line here at the very end to tell Pygame essentially to take whatever's happening within the while loop now at the moment that's only one image being shown but over time this is going to be a whole bunch of different images so I need to take everything that's happened within that one iteration of the loop and then I need to update the game window with that I just add a line here within the while loop which is pygame.display.update and if I run this code again you can see there's a tiny little green character there so he's a little bit small I actually want to scale him up a bit because uh, he's kind of hard to see uh, and scaling is pretty straightforward uh, there's a uh, Pygame function for that so I can just now say initially I've loaded my image as this well now I can change it so I can say image equals Pygame dot transform dot scale so this is the function for scaling the image I first of all give it the image that I want to scale which is my AMG which I've just loaded and then I need to give it an X and a Y scale so because I just want to increase the size of this image overall I first of all need to know how big it actually is so for for the width and the height I can just say in here IMG dot get underscore width and IMG dot get underscore height now I just need to make sure I get the brackets right here because I need to put all of this within its own set of brackets and one more now if I run this nothing should change uh, in fact I made a typo here oh yeah I did I'm just going to put that right way around try that again so nothing's actually changed because all I've done is I've taken the existing image width and the existing image height and I've told it to just make it the same size so I haven't actually told it to increase or decrease the size at all so let's just define a variable up here called scale and I'll say scale equals 3 and this is how big I want these images to become so now I can just multiply them out here I can just say image dot get underscore width multiplied by oops multiplied by scale and get height multiplied by scale now of course scale could be something different at the moment it's an integer but I could make this 2.5 and in that case I'm going to end up with a float so that's something that I want to avoid and to make sure that I do avoid that I just wrap this round in an int so again like I did before I just say int wrap it around in a bracket and now no matter what I get here uh, I'm always going to end up with an integer so that's the width covered now I just need to make sure I do the same for the scale of the height so we see in here int and at the end just add another bracket okay so if I run this code again now you can see he's grown three times 
So that's this section working well now. Now this is okay, but it's not the most efficient or neat way to do this. Because if you imagine at the moment all I've got created here is one single player. But if you remember the, the game that I showed earlier, I had a whole bunch of enemies as well. So if I have to do this every time I have to create uh, an instance of a player or an enemy, then I'm just going to have to copy this code over and over and over again. And it just becomes very messy. So there's an alternative uh, and much neater way of doing this, which is to use classes. So a class essentially is going to have all the same information, but the only difference is I have to only type it out once because it's not going to be specific to a player or to an enemy. It's more like a blueprint. So it allows me to then create as many instances of that blueprint as I want. So setting that up is quite straightforward. Up here, I just say, I'll keep this code here for now, but I will get rid of it and integrate it into the class. I'll say class soldier. Uh, I'm not going to differentiate between player or enemy at this stage because they're all going to be a type of soldier. So this is what I mean by the class being the blueprint. Uh, and normally you can just leave it like this, but in this case I'm going to be creating these as sprite classes, which is something that Pygame adds in. Uh, essentially it's not going to change a whole lot. Uh, to be honest, the rest of the class is set up in more or less the exactly same way. It just gives me slightly more functionality when it comes to collisions and uh, things like that. So here I just say pygame.sprite.sprite. .sprite. The second sprite has a capital S, so just be careful of that. And then after that, I create my constructor. So this is just my init method, and all your classes are going to start off with this. The first argument here is self, which I'll explain in a second, and then it's just the rest of the arguments that I want whenever I'm calling this blueprint. So basically, these are the things that are going to make each instance unique. So for example, whenever I'm creating any type of soldier, I want to give it an X and a Y coordinate because they're not going to be in the same place. So the arguments are going to be X and Y. So that takes care of these two. Uh, then I want to know how big to scale them. So after that one, I add in a scale. Uh, and actually for now, that's pretty much everything because the rest of it is going to be handled within the instance. So for now, I can just finish the init there. Uh, and the next line, again, because this is a sprite class, I just need to add in pygame.sprite.sprite .sprite with a capital S dot and then I copy the init from that. Essentially this is just meaning that I'm going to uh, inherit some of the functionality from the sprite class. It, it just adds in some built-in code that Pygame has added there. So after that I need to take these arguments that are fed into my class and need to assign them to this particular instance of it. So this will make a little bit more sense as it goes but for now all I do is say self and then I equate it to some of these arguments. Uh, now in this case, I don't actually need to do any of that just yet. So I'm not going to type in any selfs. I'm going to leave that as it is for now. Instead, I'm going to get to loading the images. So I'll keep this X, Y, and scale here for now. Uh, and then I will move this, all the rest of this code up. So I'm going to copy that out and I'm going to put it in here. So make sure the indentation matches up. Now this first bit is still the same. IMG is correct. I'm going to be loading in that player image. Uh, note, I am saying that it's for the player, but I'll fix this later to make it non-specific so that the soldier's class can just be a blueprint, like I said. But now the, the difference here is that this is going to be my temporary image that's loaded in, but then after that, the image that I want this instance to have is going to be self. dot. So whenever you add self. dot to something, to a variable, it makes this an instance variable. So that means that whenever I create an enemy or a player and I put in some kind of information into it, this, anything that starts with a self, is going to be specific to that particular player. So self IMG is going to be exactly the same. I'm feeding in the scale argument here, so that's still being used and that's still okay. Then after that, I create a rectangle. So now I just need to add self.rect. So that again means that this is going to be allowing me to control or to handle all these different rectangles. They're all going to be specific to the particular instance. So self.rect equals self.image, this time, dot get rect. And actually, just to differentiate between img and self.img, I'm going to type this one out fully. So I'll say self.image. And lastly, I just say self.rect.center equals x and y. Again, I don't need a self for these because they're being fed in as arguments and then straight away they're going into the rectangle. Now the rectangle has a self before it, so I don't need to do that for the X and Y. Now that I've created this class, I can now, uh, like I said, it's a blueprint, so now I can just start producing as many of these as I want. 
So to create an instance now, I can just call it whatever I want. I just create a new variable. So for example, I'll say player equals, and because it's an instance of the class soldier, I type in here soldier. Now I need to feed in these arguments. So they need to match up exactly. You ignore self, but then you need to give it an X, a Y, and a scale in that order. So my X is already down here. I'm just going to type in 200. My Y is also 200, and then scale was 3. So now I can get rid of all this stuff, uh, and this on its own is going to create my instance of the player. So now what I should be able to do, if I go to back down to this code here, remember I said previously screen.blit, img, and rect. Well, these variables don't exist anymore. So if I run this code again, I'm going to get an error at this point. What I can do instead is take the image from this instance of this class, as well as the rectangle. So player is that instance. Now I can say in here, player dot, and now this player has access to any variable within here that has a self before it. So this was originally my image. Well, now I can say player dot image, which means that it's going to access this image here. And then I can just say player dot rect. So it's going to access that rectangle there. If I run this code again, I now get that exact same player in the same position as I had before, but now it's done with object oriented programming and I've got this class set up. But now it's quite easy to just make as many of these as I want. So I can say player two equals soldier, exactly the same thing, but let's say 400 on the X coordinate. Well, now I can copy this code down and say player two and player two. I run this and now I have two instances of it. So you can see now I haven't had to repeat all of this code. And of course, this soldier class is going to get bigger and bigger as I go. But to create more instances of it, I don't need to repeat any of it. I just create this one instance. I feed in the arguments that I want and it runs this blueprint and it creates a specific instance of it. Now, the other thing to add here is this section here, again, could also become quite repetitive because if I have a whole bunch of enemies, I have to type this out individually for each one. Well, I don't need to do this within my soldier class, I'm, I'm able to create additional methods. So I can make as many methods in here as I want. And methods are basically just functions that are within a class. So I'm just going to create a method called draw. It's going to be called def draw. It doesn't take any arguments. However, you always need to call self as the initial argument. So even if you don't want to feed anything into it, you always need to define it with self. And now in here, I can just take the lines that I had below. So I can just copy this, move it up into here instead. So now I'm saying the exact same thing. I'm saying screen.blit. So basically take the image and put it onto the screen. But now instead of being specific to the player instance, I just say self. And that means that whenever I call this method for any of my instances, it's going to run this section of code. So I say change self.image and I change that to self.rect. Uh, and now I can do the exact same thing. I get rid of this line here as well. But now all I need to do is say player.draw. And that means that it's going to access the player instance. And this player instance is an instance of the soldier class. The soldier class has a draw method. And this is what that method does. So that's the logic within here. So I say player.draw and that just runs that code. I can do the exact same thing here for player2.draw. And it's going to draw both of them on the screen again. So if I run this code, you can see it's doing the same thing as it was before. And I've got these two instances. So in the next video, I'm going to add in some player controls. But for now, if you found this one useful, then please do leave a like. And if you want to stay up to date with these, then feel free to subscribe. Thanks for watching.